Please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good evening, you're watching CNBC TV 18 and this is After the Bell. Here are the top headlines that we're tracking at this hour. I feel that the group is in very able hands with Chandra. In an exclusive interview to CNBC TV 18, Ratan Tata backs Chandra as the group head, says the group is going through a transformation and will probably look very different in the next 10 years. So I think the trusts have gone through and are going through a transformation. Tata Trust has evolved to meet the changing needs of India, says Ratan Tata, says the transformation was necessary to stay relevant. And Tata Steel and Thyssen Krupp sealed the deal to form Europe's second largest steel maker. The 50-50 joint venture will see Tata Steel transfer $3 billion debt to deleverage its India business. Deal closure likely by the end of next year. Finance Minister Arun Jaitley says measures to boost growth to be announced after a nod from the Prime Minister says need money for public infra investments as growth depends on government spending push. And Mahindra and Mahindra confirms CNBC TV 18's news break acquires Turkish tractor company Air Contractor for 478 crore rupees, the transaction to be completed by the end of November. And brokerages sound a warning off, uh, for incumbents after TRAI decided to slash interconnect user charges yesterday. Uh, Kotak, BOAML and CLSA all feel that IDEA and Airtel will feel an EBITDA pinch. Also state that Reliance Geo will be the main beneficiary from that move. And relief likely for taxpayers, sources tell CNBC TV 18 that the government may waive the penalty and interest on late filing of GSTR 3B. Expects 50 lakh more filings in the next four to five days. That's a CNBC TV 18 exclusive. Another day, another flat close on Dalal Street. The Nifty fails to hold 10,150. The Sensex keeps its nose just above 32,400. ITC and Reliance lend support while ICICI Bank and HUL drag the markets. And Mumbai feels the wrath of the rain gods once again. Schools and colleges are shut. The IMD has now withdrawn its heavy rainfall prediction. And the Bombay Municipal Corporation has also clarified that the cyclone warning was just a rumour. The 7.1 magnitude earthquake which struck Mexico yesterday has wrecked havoc. The death toll has gone up to 248 and many more are still reportedly trapped. Rescue work is still underway. And our top story this evening, Forbes has named him as one of the greatest living business minds. He's the recipient of India's second highest civilian award, the Padma Vibhushan. And under his leadership, the Tata Group's revenue touched $100 billion in 2011. Chairman Emeritus of Tata Group, Pradhan Tata, seldom makes a television appearance, but he decided to sit down with Sohail Seth, who advises Tata Sons for an exclusive interview. Uh, here are the key highlights from there. So Tata gave a massive vote of confidence to the group's current chairman, uh, N. Chandra. Uh, he believes that the group is in very able hands with N. Chandra Sekran at the helm. Just today, Tata Steel announced a deal uh, with ThyssenKrupp to revive its European steel business. And in the interview, Tata asserted that business will remain cyclical, but the important thing is to rescue those companies that are in peril. Now, he's also gone on to say uh, that the group may look very different in the next three decades, uh, but also added that it should embody the same ethical standards that it has always upheld. In fact, uh, Ratan Tata went on to say that he has to, uh, he has had to suffer. Still with us on after the bell. Now to the other big headline of the day, Finance Minister Arun Jaitley has said that Measures to boost growth will be announced after the Prime Minister's nod addressing the media today. The Finance Minister said that the government needs money for public infrastructure investments as growth depends on the government's spending push. Uh, Sapna Das has been tracking uh, uh, that speech and she joins us now with the details. Uh, Sapna, so uh, what else did the Finance Minister have to say today? Well, a very clear
clear indication coming from the Union Finance Minister, Mr. Arun Jaitley, on record uh, since the uh, you know meetings on the economy has started from Friday last week, and Ari, we have been right on the top on this story. Uh, we had reported last week extensively that the Chief Economic Advisor, Dr. Subramaniam, had briefed the Prime Minister on the state of the economy, and there were a further meeting that were taken up by the Finance Minister day for yesterday as well as yesterday. So, uh, so these interactions are going to continue, and a very clear indication coming that yes, uh, the Chief Economic Advisor, Dr. Subramaniam, had briefed the Prime Minister on the state of the economy and there were a further meeting that were taken up by the finance minister day for yesterday as well as yesterday. So, uh, so these interactions are going to continue and a very clear indication coming that yes, uh, possibly a plan for announcement of some measures to boost the economy uh, is on the cards. Uh, the finance minister has said very clearly that the prime minister's nod will be required on this front. Um, and, uh, you know, this could, this could be more on the investment side. This could be more also in terms of, uh, you know, uh, boosting the job market. Uh, possibly something may also be done on the fiscal front, but very difficult to say exactly how much and uh, why Why right now. Apart from this, uh, uh, you know, his, uh, his line that uh, you really can't cut back on social expenditure right now and we need the money for that. Uh, let me also contextualize that further. Basically, he was saying very clearly that there is no scope for cutting duties on petroleum products because that kitty that the government has created, that's one big cushion in the budget right now and that money is required for developmental expenditure, especially when the growth momentum is low. Private sector investment is not picking up. So that is also in that context. But uh, definitely measures to boost the economy are on the cards. Once the PM not comes in, the announcement will be made by the finance minister accordingly. Right, Sapna. Thanks for joining us with those important details. So, uh, uh, important announcements coming there from the finance minister uh, regarding the government's uh, spending push. But moving on to the other big story that we're tracking today, Tata Steel and Germany's uh, Thyssen Krupp have entered into a preliminary deal to create Europe's second largest steel enterprise. Now, that proposed joint venture will involve combining Tata's plants in the Netherlands and the United Kingdom with ThyssenKrupp's plants. Uh, so the combined entity will rival Europe's top steel producer, ArcelorMittal. Let's quickly take you through the deal contours. Uh, so Tata Steel will transfer around $2.8 billion worth of debt to the joint venture. Moreover, the joint venture, uh, which will be named uh, ThyssenKrupp Tata Steel, will be managed by a lean holding company in the Netherlands. Uh, that proposed joint venture will, however, require approval from the company's boards uh, and from antitrust authorities in Europe as well. In fact, uh, speaking to the media earlier in the day, uh, N. Chandrasekharan, uh, chairman of Tata Sun, said that the joint venture with Thyssen Group will give Indian steel giant a sustainable future in Europe. Uh, uh, Kaushik Chatterjee, who's the executive director at Tata Steel, he's also said that they expect the deal to be closed by March 2019. In fact, we caught up with uh, Guido Kirkov, uh, the CFO of Thyssen Group AG. Uh, let's listen into what he had to say. I think um, the issue we all face here in uh, Europe, first of all, is that we have Euro uh, overcapacities in the steel sector everywhere. Mm -hmm. And I think uh, combining the two entities, Tata Steel Europe and ThyssenKrupp Steel Europe, is really uh, the best way to address these issues that we have here in the European market. We will create a very strong number two in the market, uh, by far bigger than the next ones, and therefore will be able to drive synergies and have a better standing and to break out of the vicious circle of always going down on overcapacities. So this, I think, is a strong rationale. Mm. Now, on the other hand, how is it going to look like the joint venture and what debt is put down? <clears throat> Both companies will contribute debt. As you could see on the statement of uh, Tata uh, overall, they will contribute 2.5 billion financial debt. We will contribute basically pensions and other liabilities operating-wise into the joint venture of a value of around 4 billion. With that, we think we have driven and given the EBITDA factors that we will see for the combined entity, including the synergies, a strong financial position. And you always have to keep in mind that, for example, German pension liabilities, which are completely unfunded if you contribute them, give you a clear and stable cash payout throughout the years, and you never have to refinance them. So therefore, we think we have found a solution for financing the giant venture that is stable and gives them, looking forward, all the opportunities to really gather and grab all the momentum uh, driven by the technology and innovation that will be in that big group in Europe. We read the Tata Steel statement, which says that there could be synergies uh, to the tune of about 400 to 600 uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, million. So can you explain to us how this is going to come through and is this the synergy benefit that will purely accrue to Tata, uh, Tata Steel or are we talking about these are synergies for the joint venture as a whole? 
No, this, uh, the 4 to 600 million is clearly the synergies we want to see for the joint venture overall. And we have uh, clearly stated as well that we think it's up to 4,000 people, up to 2,000 in administration and up to 2,000 employees uh, in production sites that we see. And this will be largely equally shared across uh, the two contributing parties. Mm -hmm. uh, where do we see the synergies now? Clearly, it's uh, general administration costs that we want to reduce and we can do uh, selling as well. On the other hand, we see R&D currently we uh, develop the same product twice. We can reduce that and focus better on uh, the key requirements of our customers in a more focused and better manner going forward. On top of that, we can better lever all and use our capacities uh, by bigger lots and by a certain focus for certain um, uh, uh, equipment just in one location instead of running it in two mm -hmm. so we can have larger lots and therefore get more economies out of scale out of the current footprint. Okay. This all will help us to level the four to six hundred million in the first phase. Now it's time for a special initiative, Alarm Bajne Se Pehle Jago Re, which is a Tata D campaign in association with Network 18. Uh, so we've often debated that academics and sports do not go hand in hand, but one school is trying to dispel that notion. Sehwag International School is trying to nurture the nation's upcoming sports stars without letting the academics suffer. Take a look. Sport means different things for different people. Sport means everything to me. Sports is my passion and life. Sports play a very important role in our life. It is a basic need for me. One school that understands the importance of sports and nurtures budding sports persons is Sehwag International School in Jharkhand, Haryana. Founded by legendary cricketer Virender Sehwag, the school aims to instill values in its students that go beyond classrooms. Vision of uh, Sehwag School is to produce uh, global leaders for future with excellence. And with sports being one medium, it gives students an excellent opportunity to uh, inculcate the values, to imbibe the values as well as to implement it. The school helps its students dream beyond the confines of a 9 to 5 job. Whether it is 9 year old Anuranjini Alawat, 15 year old Babar Khan, or 17 year old Lakhan Tomar, who are already dreaming beyond national level competitions. I want to play for India. I want to play, play Olympics, Asian Games, and I want to win the gold medals and perform well. The students which are here, they have a passion for their sports and the management is taking utmost care that the qualified coaches are appointed here. An innovative approach to education is helping Sehwag International School nurture the nation's upcoming sportspersons. Perhaps it is time other schools also took notice. And you too can be part of this change. If you think that sport should be made a compulsory part of school curriculum, please join our campaign by visiting jagore.com or giving a missed call on 7847844444 to sign that petition.